Baker, a member of our BYU Sports Nation game day crew. He is David Nixon. David, let's ask you the question of the day. What's the most impressive thing you've witnessed thus far at uh, the indoor practice facility? Well, you guys alluded to it. It's, it's early. There, there's still a bit more impressive things to be had. But uh, I've been impressed with the, the vertical jump. I mean, you look at the guys that are put up numbers. You've got a few of them 35-plus. Um, bench press is kind of about where we thought it would be. Blake, uh, Blake Friedland put up 25, uh, which for a lineman is, is good. Uh, you want to be 30-plus, but for him and, and injuries, things like that coming off, that's a that's – a, that's a positive number. Um, but, uh, you know, I, for me, the atmosphere, once again, you guys touched on it, the atmosphere. I, I, I joked that when I came here, I was, like, running 40-yard dashes, trying to dodge little kids running out there. <laughs> Not really. But uh, here, this is just top-notch. It's first class. And I, I think the scouts, I was talking to some of the scouts earlier, and they're always impressed with the way that BYU puts on this, this event because that's what it is. It's an event. It's a, it's a way for these players to showcase themselves. And, and ultimately, that's you're helping the program in BYU by putting these guys on a, on, a, on a big stage and allow them to do what they got to do and, and allowing the scouts to kind of be comfortable and, and, and be able to witness uh, these guys go to work. A programming note that I should uh, make mention of as far as this two-hour show goes, they are wrapping up the broad jump and the vertical jump right now. Jake Oldroyd is going to kick next, and that will be followed by the always interesting 40-yard dash. So Oldroyd's going to kick, then the 40. We have the most exciting thing here, and then the 40. <laughs> I talked to Jake. He said, hey, make sure everybody knows the field goal posts are seven yards behind the end zone. So it's not up at the end zone right now. Um, his his holder was going to be here at 11, but the, the scouts said, hey, we'd like you to go a little early. So it looks like he'll kick off the tee. And so whatever yard line he's at, you add uh, 17. 17, like a typical kick where the snap goes back seven. So any anything that we see there, we certainly have uh, – you know, it looks like, is that Britton Hogan, uh, long snapper? So for some punts here, perhaps, from Jake. Uh, but Jake has an opportunity as well. Certainly, um, Jake's high was real high. Uh, the first half of 2019, he's leading the country with 10 of 11. He's uh, making 50-plusers on the reg. Um, obviously, 2016 is his first field goal attempt as a game winner against Arizona with those neon cleats, which he wore on senior day, which was fun. And then 2020 was his best year. He's the Lou Groves the finalist, the top three there. He was incredible. He didn't miss a field goal. Of note, he makes 16 in a row between 21 and 22. He's BYU's all-time leading point scorer. We don't talk about him in the same breath as, uh, uh, you know, Tyler Hawes and Jimmer Fredette. But that's what he is for football with field goals and points and whatnot. I know it's different. But Jake has a chance here to, uh, to impress some scouts and, and get a look because he's got a huge leg. And when he's dialed in, and obviously that's important for a kicker, um, he is he is as good as anybody, but he's got to be dialed in to get that opportunity. All right, well, Jake Oldroyd prepares to kick and show off his skill set. David, I want to take you big picture again. You already alluded to it a little bit, how this event has changed from when you participated in it. And it hasn't been that long. You're not that old. Not that old. But it is, it's pretty wild. I don't know. 09 has been 14 years. <laughs> it's pretty wild how this thing has oh, shifted yeah. and what it has, it has evolved into here. 100%. It's funny. We were talking about earlier on the field when, when you guys were getting ready. It's been 14 years, whatever it has been. But it feels like it was yesterday. I, mean, I, I literally remember this exact same feeling. In fact, I feel a little bit anxious and a little bit nauseous <laughs> for these guys uh, because so much work goes into this, right? I mean, these guys, since the season's been over, they've been training every single day, not for football, but for these drills. Yeah. So so you work every day. You, you, you maybe stay here locally. I went to California down in L.A. where you have nice weather. We can get out and train every day. Um, and you work on your hand placement. You work on your footwork for a three-cone drill, uh, for the shuttle drill. How many steps you take? How do you reach? Uh, on the 40-yard drill, how do you stay low out of your, you know, right when you come out of the, the gates, how to stay low your first 10 yards, and then you get into your drive phase, and you continue from there. So there's so much that goes into work. Even the bench press. Uh, bench press, they, 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 you, know, you, you, you practice this, and you realize, okay, you need to take a break at some point. So pump out. How many can you pump out? So you have a goal in, in your head. I think mine was like 15. Get to 15 first. Take a break. Try to pump out another five to seven. Take a break. And, and so there's, there's this method to all this madness. And it's, it's, it's crazy to watch it. these guys go out there. You see them warming up, and, and they've all got their exact same routines. that They've been practicing now for three, three full months. And, uh, and now today you get to put it on display. And, and there's a lot of anxiety. But, there's, you know, it's also fun to go out there and do it and then know that after today, 
you can go back to eating cheeseburgers and you, <laughs> you, you, you can go back and just relax a little bit. You don't have to worry about doing all these crazy drills because these are the only time you'll do these drills, right? I mean, you, after this happens, you don't go to a camp and all of a sudden they're like, hey, drop down, give me the 40. Three cone. I need the three, three cone drill after this drill. After we do some pass rush and stuff, give me the three cone drill real quick. I mean, just it doesn't happen. So it's 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 just one day you got to crank it out, but they've been working hard for, for this moment. And so far, the numbers are coming up. They're impressive. What did you get in the uh, bench? I got 27 reps. That so would've, That would have been tied second at the combine this year. I, I will say this. Good, it was pretty good. I'll say this. I wasn't always the strongest guy. I mean, I, 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 I could put up good numbers, but guys would max more than I would, per se. But I always have pretty decent endurance. Endurance so, strength. Yeah. That's but, different. So it's, it's yeah. different. So, yeah, they obviously don't go out here and say, okay, let's see, can you throw up 400 plus? This is a pure endurance play. And uh, fortunately, I was pretty good at that. But Do you think at some point we'll have more nuance for certain positions in this situation? Because it feels like it's, um, you know, certain things you go, okay, that's more for the receiver's safeties. In vertical jump, that's receiver's safeties. In broad jump, um, ankles and hips with running backs yeah. and so on we've been yeah. talking about. Do you think at some point this gets a little more specific per position? They've been doing it for so long. I think this is just a good baseline metric that you can just you can put it across the board. Where I think we, we don't put as much uh, emphasis on it are the drills. So eventually, you know, after this is all said and done, the scouts and, and you know, every, all the teams here will pull aside certain players and say, listen, Bay Wilgar, I want to see you do the W drill. I want to see you do the bag drill. I want to see you do some ball drills. And so that's where you start to showcase. And that's where you do position, uh, position specific type things. But this is just, you know, th this is just you're seeing, are these guys athletes? Frankly, they know all these guys out here. They've been watching them all season long on the football field, right? So there's not going to be really any surprises out here. All these scouts, they've done their homework. They've watched the film. Now they're coming out here and just, does it pass the eye test? Is there anything, does a guy go put up 30, you know, 30 reps on bench press? Does a guy all of a sudden jump 40 inches that we didn't quite know about, you couldn't see on the film? Okay, well, yeah, now I'm going to go to bat for that guy. And that's why the scouts, this is a big deal for the scouts because if they can go find that diamond in the rough, I mean, that's their job today. Everyone knows about Puka. Everyone knows about Jaron, right? Can they go find that diamond in the rough that can come in as a free agent and all of a sudden make a splash? Uh, and that's when they get to go to their GM, to their team, the player personnel team, say, listen, I need a promotion. I've, I, found a, I found a Peyton Wilgar who came out and went to camp and became a starter one day. Um, I need a promotion because I found that guy, right? And so this is a big day for the scouts, too, because they're trying to find that, uh, like I said, that diamond in the rough. Who is that guy for BYU? Is there one this year? Uh, you know, for me, initially, just through the drills we've seen so far, how about Chris Brooks? Chris Brooks looks great. We thought this might happen, and Caleb Hayes is right there yeah, with Caleb him. Caleb Hayes winning the Jonah showing. Tournament Award. Yeah. That's what I call it, the yeah. Pro Day but, MVP. But, but, you know, coming up to this, Chris Brooks had a good showing at, at the Senior Bowl. Uh, you know, and he's, H he's Hula Bowl. Hula Bowl. He's, yep. he's, had some, he's had some impressive showings, and there's been some talk about him. Um, you know, and he looks, he looks great as well, and, and as you should. Listen, if you come into this and you're overweight or you're sloppy, uh, we've known from the national media, you, they, take, they take note that you should be in the best shape of your life today. Uh, and like I said, after that, you can kind of let yourself go. A Why'd bit. you look at us when you said that? Well, I think all of us, <laughs> we all do, well, we're all in our best shape right now. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, totally. Yeah, something like that. I did my 50 push ups and sit ups this morning. There you go. You're, <laughs> on, you're on target. Good job, Kyle Collins. You're halfway there. That, that's big rush of five. Jake Oldroyd is kicking. I ate a breakfast sausage sandwich in the in here. indoor practice facility. We'll show you. Uh, some certain aspects of this, and then we will push toward the 40-yard dash. No, this is the most important thing here. Let's go. David, uh, was there an event or a metric or a measurement that you felt like was more important and, and put you on the radar more than some of the other drills when you were attempting to break into the NFL? You know, this is kind of cliche, but it's, it's that 40-yard dash, especially for a, a, a linebacker. That's where you can set yourself apart between being in that 4-5 or five range versus the 4-6 or 4-7s. Um, and, and so the 40 for, I think, for a linebacker, especially with where the game's headed in the NFL, we talk about this all the time, it's a passing lead. And, and, and they've made the rules to where it's a passing lead. You, people want to see more points. They want to see more deep balls, et cetera. And so linebackers, you now have to cover some side to side. you got to cover quick backs on the backfield. And so it's all about speed. And, and for me, it was, it was the 40. My, I'd say the, the second most important for me was the three-cone three drill and then the shuttle drill because that's, for linebackers, those are the type of drills that can see your change of, change of uh uh, pace, uh, the, the way you're able to use your hips, um, and so there's there's a lot of weight put on those drills, and so those are kind of my three main emphasis ones. I mean, nobody really cares about the broad jump. I mean, even the vertical, right? Vertical is important for DBs and wide receivers. Can you go up and get the ball, yes. right? Can you contest it? 
um, linebacker not so much. I mean, it's a nice metric to show if you're athletic or not. But the, the three cone shuttle, and, and that's the thing about each position. Like you got linemen out here that are doing, you know, eight feet broad jump. Who cares? It right? doesn't matter. Who cares? But but on the bench, they better be putting up impressive numbers, if, numbers if, yeah. if you want to, you know, be looked at. So it, it, it matters. And, and listen, these guys come in here with a game plan in their head. They got to know which drills they got to perform well in and which ones they don't really care about. Um, and so you you I mean, this is a whole. There, there's a science to this whole thing, and uh, so far, so good. So far, we have not seen uh, Jaron Hall participate in any of the measurables. He did Except not... for the measurements. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but none of the six drills. We'll see if he does any of them. Um, you know, uh, there was conversation of perhaps he might have tweaked uh, the ankle that he injured against Stanford at senior day. Not exactly sure on that. Not saying that happened. But if he's healthy and able, I think he needs to perform in some of the measurables. Yesterday, Cam Mellick told us, yeah, I think Puka Nakua does uh, need to participate in some of the measurables, and he has so far in all three, 15 on the bench press, 33-inch vert, 10-1 broad jump so far. All right, let's get you caught up on a few things. Uh, Jake Oldroyd was successful kicking from 30 and 35 yards. He's now moved back to 40 yards. He, he uh, did not is... have success in the 40s this year. That was really where he struggled. So um, This is from 45 yards And hopefully right he's, now. he's perfect in all of these, right, because... There's no pass rush. There's no snap. And that one has been pushed wide right. I saw him attempt a 65-yarder earlier. It was, it was a little short, but it was in his warm-up. I just saw the one. He might have made a couple. All right. We're going to take our second break. Harvey Longy.